morning. Good morning. It's good to see you this morning. Thank you for uh, coming and uh, uh, being with us today. Today's a special day for us, and uh, uh, glad to have Brother uh, Peter Copeland here with us uh, from Myrtle Beach. Not many people leave the beach and come here. Most leave here and go to the beach, but he decided uh, to get away from the rat race and to, to come here today. And Brother Peter, we're glad to have you uh, this morning. I uh, just want to remind you that we're not through, and I had told you wrong. We, we're, we're a little bit short of the goal once we recounted. So I ain't going to tell you how much I need. Bring it tonight. Let's, uh, tonight, we, if, you ha- if you haven't given yet, what I'm saying is, get you an envelope. You can do it now. Get you an envelope. Put it in the plate when it's passed. And we, we don't like a lot going, well, going over our goal. So whatever you can give, I promise you will help us get there. And, of course, the envelopes will... We'll be out tonight, and uh, you can always, uh, uh, if you didn't bring it with you today, bring it back with you tonight, and uh, we'll accept it any time. So just, just keep that in mind. Also want to remind you that uh, uh, we will be having uh, services tonight, always on Sunday night. I'll continue my study in the uh, book of Nehemiah, uh, getting ready to build that wall, opposition's coming against him. And we'll talk about how you deal with that tonight, so let me invite you to, to come back and to, to uh, be with us for that. Also, I want to remind you that next Sunday morning that we will have our men's breakfast at 8.15 and Bible study before Sunday school, so all the men and the, uh, the boys are, uh, want you to come out next Sunday morning, S- Sunday nights, bring your kids, we have t- classes for them, Wednesday nights, bring your kids, we've classes for them, uh, let me encourage you to bring them. I want to share with you uh, a card uh, that I got was on my desk. As you all know, uh, Brother Jim Glass passed away and last Sunday. And, uh, of course, had his service yesterday and uh, his family's here today. It's good to see them. And I have a a letter from them to the church. To our dear church family, our dad, our husband, our papa passed away on Sunday one week ago. We could not let this Sunday pass without letting you know how very much we appreciate all that you have done uh, during the time of dad's illness. It also says in death, The calls, the cards, the food, the visits meant so much to the the ladies that prepared the meal after the memorial service yesterday. All we can say is thank you so much. A special thanks to Mr. Holly, Mr. Gardner, and Mr. Tommy for their part in the service. Each one had a huge impact in our dad's spiritual journey. Lisa's beautiful solos meant so much. To sum it up, our dad loved Southside. The Glass family. Thank y'all for such a kind word. Any other announcements that I need to make before we move on? Uh, Mimi? Mimi's going to come and uh, lead us as we uh, get started with our worship now.
again. Thank you. You may be seated. All right, children, y'all come on up here for a few minutes. I got a story to tell you. There we go. There we go. Hey, baby, how you doing? All right. <laughs> well, good morning. good morning. How y'all doing? Good you doing good? All right. Good to see you. I ask you a question. Do any of y'all have any friends? You have friends? Yep. Yep. You got some friends? Yep. All of you got friends? Yeah. Why? I'm a, you got friends? Name one. I'm Briar. All right. He knows one of them. Y'all got friends? You do? Okay. All right. You know one of them? You got a friend on each side of you, don't you? That's right. Well, did you know that when Jesus was here, that he had friends? Let me rephrase it. Do any of you have a best friend? All right, I ain't going to ask you who that is. Okay? Well, when Jesus was here, he had some best friends. There were two sisters and a brother. And what the sisters' names were Mary and Martha. The brother's name was Lazarus. Y'all ever, y'all heard of those? Lazarus, raised from dead, all that stuff. All right. Well, when Jesus was around Beth, where they lived, that's, what, that's how close friends they were. Jesus always stayed at their house with them. And so, one day, they heard that Jesus was nearby. And so they said what? That he's probably going to come and stay with us. And so, Lazarus didn't much care. He's a man. But Mary and Martha, especially Martha, what is this thing that they say when they know a special guest is coming? We got to vacuum the carpet. We got to clean the table. We got to dust. This is what some do. Where, like me, Lazarus probably said, looks okay to me. That's just the way it is. But Mary and Martha, they were wanting to get, especially Martha. And so, when it got closer, they started, you know, to clean a house. You see, in those days, you couldn't go to the food line or the Piggly Wiggly and get your groceries. You had to go out in the garden and get them. So what did they have to do? Somebody had to go get the food and, and get it in and clean it up and get it ready to eat. And so there was a lot of work to be done. When they heard that Jesus was getting near, all of a sudden, Martha began to panic a little bit. And so she, uh, she kind of says to her sister Mary, you need to help me with this. I can't, I can't do all this by myself. It's just too much. Well, the Bible says that, that Mary saw Jesus coming. Now, Martha is in the kitchen. She's cooking. She's preparing the meal so they can eat. She's a little bit hot because Mary is not back there helping her like she told her to. And so Jesus comes into the house. He sits down in the house. And when he started teaching, which he did most places he went, Mary wanted to hear what he had to say. So what did she do? The Bible says she went and she knelt where Jesus was. So here we go. You got one sister in the kitchen cooking. You got one sister in the living room listening to Jesus talk. Well, the one in the kitchen gets a little angry. 
And she comes um, out and she says, Mary, you need to come and help me do this. You need to help me do that. Jesus said, she's at my feet. That's what she feels like doing. So Jesus come in and he tries to, and he does to a certain degree, settle down this little tiff that they have between them. Okay? And so you got these friends. You know what I learned? Even friends don't always get along all the time. You know what I mean? Some of you got friends that you, you very seldom didn't, but that's life. But the one thing that you learn to do with a friend is this. You learn to love them. You learn to forgive them, right? And then you pray for them that God will bless them. And you love the people that love you. And sometimes, or all times, you must also love those that may not love you. That's what Jesus did, didn't he? Okay. All right. I'll stop it there. I'll finish it next Sunday morning with the little conflict between the two sisters here. And we'll finish it up next Sunday morning. Anybody want to pray for me this morning? Hmm? You want to pray? All right, Brian, go ahead and pray, buddy. Pray. You want to pray? Or you want me to pray? Hmm? Me, okay, let's pray. God, uh, There's a song that we don't sing much, but we know it well. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. God, I thank you that even as children, that God, you love, especially as children, you said you love the children. So God, I pray as these kids grow up and they're taught in their homes and they're, they're taught here at the church, that they will learn to be like the older folks that we talk about in the Bible sometimes, that they will learn to love one another and they will learn to forgive one another. Lord, bless them now as they go into their class this morning. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Hey, that's right, amen. I like that. I might, you say amen, we might keep you in here. There you go. Here you go. All right. Okie doke. This is my back up here. <laughs> All right. All right, kids. Who got them this morning? Casey? Okay. Good deal. <laughs> there we go. All righty. At this time, we're uh, going to have our offertory hymn, and uh, we'll ask our ushers to come forward. I'm going to pray, and uh, Mimi will come and, and lead us in this. It's a, this is actually a great mission song, and the hymn will set my soul afire. So it's one of the best mission songs I know. And so uh, that's what we want to have done to us today as we listen to Brother Peter here, that God might set our souls on fire to do the mission work that God has called church to do. So let's pray, and then uh, Mimi will come and lead us, and then I'll introduce Brother Peter to you. Father, I want to thank you, God, for this day. I want to thank you for those children that were just here. God, I pray as they go back into their, their church this morning, God, that you would bless them. God, I pray that uh, you would be here with us today. This is a special day. 
God, thank you for folks that are willing to go and to sacrifice and, and do the mission work, God, that maybe we'd love to do, but we, we can't. But, God, you've called people into the field. And Peter's one of those. And, God, I thank you for your calling that your work gets done throughout all the world because of folks like him that are willing to sacrifice and, and willing to trust you. God, I pray now that you'd bless him as he speaks to us. I pray, God, that you would give us ears to listen, hearts to take in what he has to say. God, I pray that you will bless this morning, that, God, we will feel your presence in this place today, and, God, you would be real to us and even be more real to us after we listen to what Mr. Peter has to say about him, God, uh, that God will become even closer and more understanding for us. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, hymn number 573, Set My Soul Afire. Stand with us, please, as we sing. Thank you, church. Set my soul afire, Lord. Today is a special day as we uh, finish up our, our, our giving to the Janie Chapman offering. And we have a young man here that some of you were here a few months ago, and he actually spoke in our church uh, here with the associational. And we were so impressed with him that... Uh, we called him and asked him if he would come back and share with us the ministry that he is doing. He's been doing this ministry for four years now. Called by God, come from Charleston, and he has a ministry in Myrtle Beach. It's called Impact Ministries. And he has come to share with us today. 
the importance of this ministry, and we need to realize the importance of all the ministries that we support. So, Brother Peter, without further ado, it's all yours, brother. Awesome. Great to be with you this morning. How are we? Good. It's great to be back at Southside. It's good to be in Sumter. Um, do you all have a high school here called the Sumter High School? Gamecocks, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And I'm a proud Gamecock fan. It's great to be in Sumter this morning after that win yesterday. Sorry, I had to mention it. I'm sorry. I'm glad you didn't mention it earlier. Yeah. <laughs> I pulled up outside. There was a white truck with a big old Carolina on the back of it. I said, I'm going to park right here beside this one. So if that's your truck, you and I are good friends. But uh, my name is Peter Copeland. My wife, Chelsea. Um, is there and uh, we serve in Myrtle Beach South Carolina how many of you have been to Myrtle Beach before how many of you would like to go back this afternoon and go to your place eat your seafood play your golf or go to Tanger that's about what we like to do and so here's the funny thing is I don't even like the beach I like the coastal community because I like to eat fried shrimp I like to play mini golf and I'm a season pass to four of the mini golf courses so I'm not a big golfer, but that's okay. And so, um, like your pastor said, I grew up in, uh, in Charleston. Um, when the shipyard closed there, we moved to Columbia and um, spent my middle school and high school years there. Then went back to Charleston, graduated from Charleston Southern University. I'm a proud alumni, go Bucks. And then after that, I went over to New Orleans Baptist Seminary in 2004. was there. I'm going to do my seminary, do it real quick, about two years and be done. And then Hurricane Katrina came. So I left there on Saturday, Katrina hit on Monday, and went up to Southeastern Seminary and finished there. And my ministry assignment was to go to Myrtle Beach. And so for almost three years, I served in Myrtle Beach, doing a lot of what I'm going to share with you this morning. And then that time, and, and it was a two-year um, assignment, and we extended it for nine months. And they said, okay, you got to leave now. And so I went to Georgia, down in Southeast Georgia, in the Brunswick area, Jekyll Island, St. Simons Island. And we did ministry down there, and in that process, I was working on my Ph.D. at New Orleans Seminary, flying back from Brunswick to New Orleans six times a year. And um, in that process, I met this wonderful lady uh, working on her degree in counseling, marriage and family counseling, and we got married. And so I went back to New Orleans, and I finished my dissertation there. So in June of 18, we moved, and we went to Myrtle Beach to do some ministry. And I want to share with you some of those ministries this morning. This is not working, so thank you. Yep, got it? Good. Awesome. Um, I don't know if you know this, but Myrtle Beach uh, receives about 18 million tourists a year. And when I see people, I see a ministry opportunity. In Myrtle Beach, we're the second fast, we are, I'm sorry, we are now the fastest growing metropolitan area in North America. That is how many people love Myrtle Beach. They see the land is cheap, the taxes are cheap, they're coming all from the north, and they're coming to Myrtle Beach. And so we are the fastest growing metropolitan area in USA. So 18 million tourists, the fastest growing metropolitan area, so now we have people all across our city. Uh, and we look at those and we see ministry opportunities as well. Next slide. Next slide, I got that one in there. So um, I, I get to serve uh, as the assistant director at Impact Ministries, but another ministry assignment that I have is I am the chaplain at the Apache Campground. How many of you have been in one of our campgrounds in Myrtle Beach? Lakewood, a pirate land, travel park, ocean lakes. <laughs> Apache is kind of a smaller one. It's back there behind Tanger on 17. And um, this morning um, at 9 o'clock, they had about 60 to 80 in worship this morning. Um, and right now we're still meeting on the pier. That's the southeast longest wooden pier in the ocean. And right in the middle of that pier, um, right there, we have our services from Easter Sunday all the way through October. Um, Easter Sunday, we had about 500 in our two services. Um, so um, chapel life is really, really good. I've got probably sometimes more people at my chapel services than half of the churches uh, in Southern Baptist life. Uh, which is awesome because we, we say it's an interdenominational service. We have um, Baptists, uh, we have Presbyterians, we have Lutherans, we have Episcopalians, we have Methodists, we have Assembly of God, we have Catholic. We have all sorts of people gathering. I'm Baptist, but that's okay. 
And I preach the Word of God, and we allow God to work through His Word and through His Spirit in our services. And um, um, what's really neat is that um, next Sunday is the first Sunday in October, if I'm right. Um, October 1st is the beginning of snowbird season. So for uh, many of our people that will come from the north, they'll come and there'll be snowbirds in the Grand Strand. And they'll be there from October all the way through the end of March. So our snowbird numbers will have 80 to 100, maybe 120 on a high Sunday in worship. And we'll be actually, we'll be over under the pier under a nice area. Um, it's kind of heated a little bit. They can close it in for us so that we can continue to have service. So we have service every Sunday at 9 o'clock. Um, up at Myrtle Beach Travel Park, they have a chaplain that we hire through Impact Ministries. They have services as well. Um, Pirate Land has services. Lakewood, Ocean Lakes, all of these campgrounds, most of these campgrounds have services so that when people are on vacation, they can come and still gather as the body of Christ and worship the Lord together. So some different ministries that, uh, that we have is what I really want to share with you this morning is about how you can be involved with us, about bringing a mission group from Southside Baptist Church in Sumter and to come and do ministry with us. Now here's the thing. I'm 40. I always give this conversation talk. I give it a lot. I never do it the same. But I get a lot of people that say, come up to me and say, well, we want our students or our youth to come and do ministry with you. That's great. That's wonderful. But if you're tiny, all the way to 90, you can come together as the body of Christ here at Southside and come and join us in ministry in Myrtle Beach. I want to share with you what that looks like um, for you, and I want you to come and join me in what we're doing. So we do a lot of different ministries that I'm going to share with you this morning. We also do international mission trips. Uh, we've also done some domestic mission trips. Uh, when there are hurricanes or flooding or disaster relief needs in our community, we have a ministry going on for that as well. We haven't had that in a while, which is a good thing. Um, but, you know, we don't know what's coming up this week in the hurricane down there. So we, we never know the opportunities of ministry um, that we have. About early last year, uh, we actually finally, the Lord provided for us to have our ministry center. And we are excited about that because that now provides lodging for our groups that want to come in and do ministry with us. Um, how many of you know where the um, Krispy Kreme Donuts is by... Um, She's honest. She's honest. Down by um, um, Family Kingdom. You know where that Krispy Kreme is? That's First Avenue South. If you go across the street headed to the beach, you will run into our property over here. This is now our Impact Ministries Retreat Center, Myrtle Beach. It's a small little walk right to the ocean. And so um, it's a 4,600 square foot um, facility. We have two buildings, a parking lot, and a pool. Um, our A building, um, we have uh, some offices, we have apartment complexes, and then um, upstairs will be our director's home, and then also some more living space as well. Our B building is our mission group building. It's where churches come and they can stay in our building for their week of ministry or their weekend of ministry. Um, if we're not doing a mission group, we may um, have other groups that want to come in. We have a group today that's leaving. A, a ladies' retreat have come in, like 27 ladies. They've been meeting since um, Thursday or Friday, and they came in for the weekend and are doing a ladies' retreat at our retreat center. So we have different groups using it, and it's a great place to come away um, from life and do discipleship and to do um, small group, uh, whatever you want to use the retreat center for. We allow our churches to do that um, on that floor. On the B building, we have two floors. Each floor holds 32 people. We have three bedrooms. One has a double bed. The other one has eight bunk beds. I know you're thinking bunk beds. They're nice. We have tempur mattresses. <laughs> I had some teenagers this past spring break. Um, the older, the seniors were telling the younger ones, hey, don't get used to this. We don't usually have these nice mattresses when we go on a mission trip. Um, but it's a nice facility. Um, and then also there's an eight bunk bedroom and there's a seven bunk bedroom. There's a big open area um, for meeting and for eating. And there's a brand new kitchen. Um, there's one, two bathrooms in that one, three, one in that one. There's, there's four bathrooms on the floor, so it's well maintained. Everything has been re renovated since we took over back uh, first of last year. Everything's been renovated and our teams are just loving a nice place to stay at the beach. Um, it's, it's just awesome. And there's some pictures on the next slide. Awesome. So you can see the nice flooring's been new, the bathrooms are new, the kitchen's new. It's just a really nice place that we can now host our mission groups and provide them a safe, comfortable, 
good night's sleep, a good place so they can make their meals together and make it affordable to be on mission in Myrtle Beach. We understand that the hotels are very expensive right now. The resorts are very expensive. Um, so now God's given us a, a place for our groups to come and stay. And from there, we can launch out and do ministry in our city. So we praise the Lord for that. And there's a little bit more work to be done um, upstairs in the A building, as well as we get that ready for our director to move in and to be on site um, all, all the time. Next slide. So let's talk about some of the different ministries that we do. You no longer have to get on a plane and go across the world to do ministry to non-English Americans. Here's the neat thing. Every year, Myrtle Beach recruits students, generally young adult college stu age students, to come to Myrtle Beach and to work in our city. They're, they are the seasonal workers. They come in on the J-1 work visa. And these students, guys and girls, they come to our area from all over the world. 20 years ago, they all came as lifeguards. But now they're coming, they're working at the Krispy Kreme. They're, they're, they're making beds at, the, at all those hotels and motels on Ocean Boulevard. They're coming in, they're working in seafood restaurants, they're working all across the Grand Strand. When you see an international student on their bike going down 17 business or down Ocean or something like that, that's a student from outside the USA on the J-1 work visa, and they're coming to make money for their family and for themselves. They're, they make enough money in two and three months in Myrtle Beach for the summer for the entire year back home, generally. There are thousands of students who come in. They fly into Myrtle Beach International Airport. Some of them have places to stay. Some of them are finding places to stay. Our retreat center housed about 20 to 30 female students this summer. We provided them a safe location. We gave them a bike that we could track. If it got stolen, we could track where it was at. And we provided them a safe place for community, for living, and for relationships as well. And so what happens then on Tuesday night, or Monday night and Wednesday night, they can go to our All Nations Cafe over at one of our churches, and they can come in for a free meal. They can get their bike worked on, their tires inflated. They can hang out together. They can play games. They can um, sing. They can do crafts. They can do English as a second language. It's just a time where they can come and, and, and wind down a little bit and be with other students from their country that they're not living with or they don't see throughout the week. And so that's an opportunity for ministry. You know, we look at those relationships, we build those friendships so that we can share Christ, the gospel, with them, but also provide for their needs. They're away from mom, they're away from um, their family, and so there are emotional needs there that need to be met as well. So we have different churches that partner together at the All Nations Cafe, and we reach out and we minister to those students. Physically, spiritually, also helping us provide them a place to live at the retreat center. It's been a really, really neat experience of how God's used that and is growing that experience to reach the world in Myrtle Beach. It's a whole lot cheaper, too. <laughs> no visas, no COVID shots, no airplane tickets or anything like that. So a lot of our groups that come in during the summer, they come in on Sunday, they leave on Friday. And so we start ministry Sunday night, and we go all the way through Friday morning. And I want to share with you this morning what those ministries are because, you know, I, I get a lot of uh, jokes about being a missionary, a resort missionary in Myrtle Beach. I do like to eat seafood. I do like to play mini golf. I do like the community. But we actually do serve the Lord uh, with our churches. And, so, and, and we rely on churches like you to come and bring a group and to do ministry in our area. Um, what I do as the assistant director is I recruit our churches to come. I recruit um, college students to come during the summer and serve on our summer staff. Because all throughout the summer, we have college students working with local churches that come just like you, to come to our city, and you're going to do these sorts of things. And each group gets to kind of pick and choose what they want to do and see what their talents and their abilities. You say, Peter, I'm bringing a group, and we're all over the age of 60. Awesome. Well, what are your gifts and your abilities? I want to plug you in and make you have a meaningful mission opportunity in our city. Well, we're going to bring a lot of uh, uh, teenagers, and we've got places for teenagers. We've got places for you to bring the whole family. I think it's a biblical model for families to be on mission together, for, for mom and dad to teach 
their sons and their daughters, or their only kid, whatever it is for you, about what missions looks like in the context of ministry in a resort area. Resort missions is incredible. People don't think about resort missions. I've got friends we're going to meet in a couple weeks in New Orleans for a little uh, fellowship and conference, and we are going to be resort missionaries from all over the U.S. I've got one in Toledo Bend, Louisiana, where all the bass fishing tournaments happen. She's been there for over 25 years. I've got another couple coming in from Red Lodge, Montana. They're ministering at Palisades on the ski resort over there in Montana. We've got another guy at Big Sky, Montana. He's ministering. He's the chaplain. He's doing services and weddings and, and all sorts of things, Riding, driving the school bus, meeting needs where God has put him as a resort missionary. Down in Orlando, we have uh, now the retired missionaries. They're coming over. and They're going to be with us. So resort missions looks a little bit differently, but there's same things that we do in resort areas you can do right here in Sumter, South Carolina. And so one of the biggest things that we do is our multi-housing ministry. We do day camps in um, apartment complexes during the night, during spring break, and any time during the year we do them in the afternoon when the kids get out of school. We also do day camps in the morning time during the summer in our campgrounds. So these are campgrounds that allow us to come and do two hours of program. These are apartment complexes that are completely open for us to wear our blue shirt, to bring the snacks, and to bring the games, and just to hang out with kids and to share with them God's love and also share something from the Word of God with them. Our day camps happen in apartment complexes and communities all across um, the Grand Street, and, and, and also a lot in Saucasty as well, if you know that area. Our, our day camps at our campgrounds happen at Pirate Land, Apache, and Travel Park. And it is amazing to see t- summer after summer these kids coming back Again, loving what they did the summer before. Again, doing the games, the snacks, the crafts, the, the music, but also hearing a scripture message from God's Word and how to apply it to their lives. One summer, my first summer in Myrtle Beach, um, as, a, as a supervisor, as a recruiter of summer staff and churches, I got an application from uh, Indiana from a girl that wanted to be on our summer staff. I'm like, how in the world did this girl hear about our ministry and want to come serve with us on our summer staff? Our summer staff is about nine to ten weeks long every summer. We look for college-age students, individuals to come and serve with us for the entire summer. They have nice lodging now. We provide all their food. Uh, We provide um, travel around town. And what they're doing is they're on ministry each day with the mission teams. And this girl said, Peter... I was one of the day camp kids at Travel Park growing up. My family came every summer, and I went to day camp every time I could. And when we came to Travel Park, and now it's my turn to give back and to make a difference in the lives of of kids at Travel Park. And so, of course, I hired Jenny, great girl. Um, Actually, she was with us a couple weeks ago. And I, I tell her, I said, I always tell your story because of the impact, impact ministries, impact, the pun intended, of what churches and our ministry is doing in the Grand Strand for the glory of God. And so this student came back and served with us for an entire summer. She left us, she went to Ireland, did ministry and missions in Ireland. And now she's married to a guy, uh, they're involved in their church down in Georgia. And, and that's one of those success stories that we see of, of someone who we had come through our program and who we discipled and who we allowed opportunities for ministry and who's continuing to build the church up. Um, in the area that God has planted her. Is it slow? Sorry. Um, One other thing that we get to do a lot um, is we do a lot of food collections. Um, The more I've been in Myrtle Beach, the more I see the need um, in our our downtown community, uh, working with some of our homeless shelters, with some of our food banks. And so it's very easy for our groups that that have some energy and they can get in our neighborhoods and they can um, tie bags on doors on one day and two days later we come back and we get those bags full of food and we take them to um, the food bank. Um, we did this uh, this summer, the first week of August, um, the day that I went and we took all the food there. They said, yeah, we gave about half this much away yesterday. So there's great need for food um, in our area. We, we have a lot of homeless, a lot of transient, uh, a lot of unhoused community um, communities in our area. And so we look for opportunities to to meet physical needs as well as spiritual needs. 
through some of the other things that we do, which is a great opportunity. Um, now that COVID is more so over, we are allowed to go back into our assisted living or senior living communities. That's what they call them now. Um, so we are actually able to go into um, a few of our um, senior living communities. And like this summer, we had a group that came and sang, and they came a, a long way um, in their charter bus, and they went to one of our facilities and sang in the afternoon, and the residents and the, the men and women just absolutely loved um, hearing their songs. And many of our churches sing songs of our faith, songs that we've seen in the hymns for many, many years. And it's amazing that for me to see um, the residents and these senior living communities um, they, they know the songs. You, they don't even need words. They may have dementia or be hard of hearing, but once they hear what's going on, they start singing, Victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me, he bought me with his redeeming love. You know what I'm talking about? How great thou art. There's songs that we sing. Um, sometimes we go in and we play bingo with the residents. Sometimes we go in and um, we, we've had uh, different groups do different things. Some, some groups, they, 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 they clean hearing aids. Uh, we have one facility on Tuesday that talk about Tech Tuesday so all the residents can come and bring their phones and say, hey, how do I use this thing? <laughs> or I can't get this thing off my phone. And so, you know, usually we get the, the, the younger ones that say, okay, let me help you with that. Or I've been in a residence home, they say, I can't get my cable to come in. I said, well, I'll try, you know, but um, Spectrum is, you know, a call away. But I went in there and tried and looked at her TV and so forth. So, again, meeting needs physical needs if possible, but also meeting social needs so that we can say, hey, Miss, Miss Julie, is there something that we can pray for you about? Miss Julie, do y'all have someone that comes and does a, a church service with y'all? Or do you know what time that church service is? Oh, I don't know. Well, let me go find out from the office and let me tell you so you can be on time next Sunday or Sunday afternoon or whenever they do it during the week. You know, again, meeting needs through selfless service. Being available for God to use you in meeting needs in whatever way, shape, or possible. Because we don't always know what the need is or what it's going to be. But if we're available and we walk into these communities, uh, we see the opportunity. Some of our groups come in. Uh, we have the old youth choirs that come in. We've had uh, senior adult um, m music groups come in and want, want to sing. Um, this summer, um, this group right here is, uh, they come often with us out of Alabama. And y'all know where the Sky Wheel is on an Ocean Boulevard, um, that big park that's called Plyler Park. Uh, we had this group set up right there to the left of Plyler Park looking at the Sky Wheel. And we had probably two to, I'd say, 150 to 250 people stop and watch this performance that had heavy, heavy overtones of Christ in it. So the words that the music minister picks songs specific to be heard. And it's a very lively show. They got costumes. They have, uh, they have the risers. And so it's well choreographed. It's awesome. But in seeing that right there at the Sky Wheel, when people are just walking by, going to different restaurants, coming off from the beach, washing off from the beach, they're hearing um, God's word through song and those sorts of things. We also do, uh, if you're ever at uh, Broadway at the beach, um, Monday through Thursday night from about 5 to 7. Um, if you go where the um, office area is, right in that little um, plaza there, we have groups wearing blue shirts, balloon sculpting, and face painting for free, complimentary. We take no donations. We just do it to share the love of Christ because that enables us a small window of opportunity, a small time slot as we're sculpting a dog for for John, and we're painting a rainbow on a little sissy's face and so forth, and we have just a few moments with them to share about God with them. Hey, sissy, did you know that when God sent the rainbow after the ark landed, that God told us that his promises are true and that he will never give up on his promises? Have you ever heard that before? Hey, John, did you know who created the dogs? Who created you? God did. God loves you. He has a purpose and a plan for you. And he wants a relationship with you. And as we're having those conversations with kids, we also are having conversations with the grandparents or the mom and dad as they're waiting on them to get their face painted or their balloons sculpted. We are not rocket science at all. 
all we look for are opportunities to share the Word of God through these creative means. That's what resort ministry is all about. It's ministry to people. How many of you, when you go on vacation, where do y'all like to go? The beach? The mountains? Far away from everybody? <laughs> on the cruise? Got any cruisers in here? When you go on vacation, what's the last thing you think of? Someone coming to talk to you about Jesus. It's the last thing you think of. But you know what I found in resort areas like Myrtle Beach? People are actually more open to it. I don't know if they're just free and relaxed and, hey, I'll talk to you. know. But people are actually open to having spiritual conversations while they're sitting on the beach, while they're hanging out at the park bench over at Broadway because it's really hot out there and they're trying to decide, do I want another lemonade or not? But they actually are open for us to love them, to share with them, and to ask them. The most important question, do you know Jesus today? And we hear the testimonies after our group sleeve. We have evaluations where they share with us, hey, what did God do this week? Any response card that comes into our ministry through our groups doing ministry in our area, I follow up with. I call the church. I call the chaplain. I call, I don't care if it's in Ohio or Minnesota or Wisconsin or if it's down the street right in Myrtle Beach. We follow up with all of our contacts because we believe that discipleship, the carrying out of the salvation experience is so important in the life of men and women of God. And so we do that as well. Next slide. I talked a lot about that, talked about our campground ministries happening in our campgrounds, not just in Lakewood or Ocean Lakes. It's amazing um, for me as a chaplain um, Y'all have service on Wednesday night here. I can remember growing up in the Baptist church, we had Monday night deacons meeting once a month. Every Tuesday night was visitation. On Wednesday, we had the family supper. We had children's choir. We had RAs and GAs. And then Sunday, it all started. I grew up in the church. But as the chaplain, I take bingo on Wednesday night as an opportunity to go be with my people. So they started saying that they play bingo on Wednesday night. I said, well, I'll, I'll come. And, you know, you get free popcorn and you pay a little bit to play bingo. And you win every now and then enough money to play bingo again a couple more times and so forth. So that's my Wednesday night visitation program is to be with people and, and, and have conversations with them as their chaplain that I don't always get on Sunday morning. You know what I mean, Pastor? And so um, great opportunity of ministry. Um, and you can always come and, and bring a group and to do ministry in our campgrounds. Next slide. All right. If you ever see during the summer blue shirts that say impact on Ocean Boulevard, let me tell you what they're doing. They're taking bags of cookies or brownies or Rice Krispie treats of something of some homemade something. And they're going into our hotels and our motels all down Ocean Boulevard from Sea Captain's house all the way down to, it's now called the Double Tree, the old Spring Made Pier. That entire area of Ocean Boulevard, we actually have groups walking those, that, that distance, um, not the whole thing at one time, okay, but a portion of it, okay. And we're taking these um, bags of, of, of baked goods, and all we're doing is walking in and saying, hey, um, for the hotel workers, thank you for what you do. Thank you for providing hospitality to our city. Thank you for taking all the criticism and putting a smiling face and thanking your people for coming. We just want to come in and bless you today. We brought for this bag of, of goodies, and um, is there anything we can pray for you about? Now, how hard is that? And you, can, you don't even know how many conversations we've had, how many prayers have been offered up. Oh, oh, hold on just a second. Hey, Jimmy, come get my shift for a second. Let me walk out and talk to these people. So they walk outside, and I don't want to say this in front of my coworkers, but, you know, life's really hard right now. Mom's not doing good. I'm just trying to get back with my wife. So we can pray right there outside on Ocean Boulevard. Hey, can I ask you, do you have a relationship with Jesus? Do you have the salvation in Christ and in Christ alone? 
And so from handing a small Ziploc bag of something good to eat to having a prayer with the person to now having a spiritual conversation about Christ and the salvation that he offers us. Y'all, we're not rocket scientists. We're just being available and obedient to the opportunities that God has given to us each and every day in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Next slide. Prayer walking as well. There's, there's some of them right there praying. And I think that's a police officer or a security guard um, right outside the hotel. I mean, uh, we encourage our groups that if, if we have bad weather, to still get in the van, to go into our community, to pray for the, for the community, pray for the needs of the community, pray that God would send more harvest field workers, more churches just like you, to come and to saturate the Grand Strand with the love of Christ and the good news of the gospel of Christ. Next slide. Block parties as well. We like to have those usually on Thursday afternoon or Thursday evening as we've had our day camps through the week or night camps through the week. And we like to have these block parties that we, um, parents and grandparents and adults will come out of their um, units and come and, and get to know the group and to share some food and some giveaways with them as well. Next slide. Blooms of face painting. I talked about it. See, I'm good at this. Keep on going. Beach ministry, one of our hardest things that we do is our beach ministry. As you know, when you go on the beach, you kind of want to do your own thing. Um, but we actually go out there, uh, we ask our groups to come up with a plan, whether that's uh, having the biggest sand sculpting contest or contests against each other, um, setting up a volume on it, inviting people to come in, setting up cornholes and um, playing the ladder golf game, anything to attract people um, to have some conversation with them. Um, sometimes it's giving away bottles of water, um, so we, a little bit of everything. Hey, let's decorate the kites and let's get all the kites in the air at one time. We'll take a picture. Um, anything that we can do to have conversations with children and with families. Um, that's what Beach Ministry is all about. Reaching needs, helping people, um, praying for people, and looking for opportunities to share the gospel with them as well. So every uh, good missions message talks about praying giving, and going. Have you heard all three of those yet? You know, as, um, as, as a camper growing up at summer camp, as a small kid, um, we would sing the song, It Only Takes a Spark to Get a Fire Going. Heard the song? And soon all those around will warm of its glowing. That's how it is with, God, with God's love. Once you take it and you experience it and you want to pass it on. Some of you older ones, y'all remember that song? That song's always kind of stuck with me as a kid. It was at that summer camp that I gave my life to Christ as a small child. It was that camp that I would later serve at throughout high school, volunteering each summer. It was at that camp where I was a summer camp director in college, just floored with that opportunity to do that. It's also the same place where I asked my wife to be my wife. It's also the same place where my wife said, yes, I do, and we got married there. Special place down in Walterboro, South Carolina. But as a small kid, my life changed when I accepted Christ to be the Lord and Savior in my life. My life changed in Charleston, West Virginia, the summer after my freshman year in high school, when God called me very clearly to the ministry. I didn't know what that would look like. I, I just knew that God had called me. And what I've found over the last, since I was in Myrtle the first time, and that was 2007, and what I've found the last 15 years is that when you say yes to God, he'll take care of you. When we came back to Myrtle Beach in 2018, when my wife came with me, she never, she's, a, she's an Atlanta girl. Her family... It was all from Florida. Her parents live in Woodstock. And I've been to Myrtle Beach. I'm a Charleston. I'm a South Carolina boy at heart. But when we came to Myrtle Beach after graduating from the seminary, she's a licensed professional counselor. I had my PhD in Christian education. We came all the way to Myrtle Beach to be at the time the assistant chaplain at the campground, preaching twice a week, I mean twice a month, the other chaplain doing the other two Sundays. Working at Impact and the thing was, the work at Impact was a fundraising position. There, there's no salary, there's no benefits, there's no health, anything. And I told, I told my wife, Chelsea, this is where we need to be. And I believe that God's going to provide. 
See, I'm a firm believer that if God guides you to it, he'll get you through it. When God guides, he provides. You know, Paul said in 1 Corinthians 10, 31, he said, Therefore, whatever you do, whether you eat or drink, to do all for the glory of God. I think Paul understood it fully, fully, that no matter what you do in your life, no matter what job you have, no matter what your meal is, no matter where you live, no matter what you do, however you vacation, to do it all for the glory of God. We came to Myrtle Beach, committed, not desiring really to go anywhere else for a very long time. And part of that was to fundraise money for our family to serve in Myrtle Beach. She would get a counseling job, and she has a wonderful opportunity to counsel individuals and families who need help with mental health. Great opportunity she has that I will never have. I have opportunities that we go on Sunday to Apache. It's our favorite part of what we do as resort missionaries, to minister and to serve in that community. But part of this and this whole process has been to fundraise our salary, to fundraise enough money for us to live, to serve, and to do ministry and to minister in Myrtle Beach. Your pastor was a little shocked this morning, and I'm sorry, pastor. But we don't receive any money from the North American Mission Board. We don't receive any of the Janie Chapman State offering through the South Carolina Baptist Convention. We don't receive any money through our local Baptist Association. We rely on churches and individuals and families just like you to help us provide financially for my family to do ministry and all the things that you saw today. And churches and families and individuals and friends of ours have stepped up. They believe in what we're doing. They know that I'm committed and I'm responsible enough to do ministry and to be wise stewards of our money so that we can continue to serve and to do ministry and to see impact ministries grow to be a force against Satan and his ways, to bring the name of Jesus to the Grand Strand through our churches and through our college staff and through every volunteer that comes, that we provide opportunities for them to do ministry in our city. Is it hard? Absolutely. But we believe in a God who can help us, who can lead us, who can guide us, and who has provided for us every step of the way. When we came I never knew how our fundraising efforts would go. At the time, we didn't know where we were going to live. Our first place that we were going to live fell through with a $90,000 lien on the property. But every step of the way, God is providing. And so I think it's important that you know as a church that there are missionaries out there that are supported and funded, and they're good. They keep on going. There are others of us that fundraise so that we can stay on the mission field that God has called us to do, that we can continue to do the ministry, the work of the evangelist, the work of the missionary, the work of the pastor, the chaplain at the campground as well. But what can you do? Every good mission message says that you can pray. You have been shown plenty of areas that you personally, maybe this morning, have been tugged on in your heart. Maybe there's something that God has opened your eyes to this morning, and that's going to be your prayer part of what I've said this morning. Because we need people in pews just like here at Southside Baptist Church to pray for this ministry. God's doing something incredible, and we want more people to experience the opportunity of sharing needs, meeting needs, sharing the love of Christ, and being on mission for the Lord Jesus Christ. I, My goal began in... January of 2007, to empower, excite, and equip local churches, Southside Baptist Church, to do the Great Commission. What is the Great Commission? Go, therefore, and to what? Make disciples. To teach them and to baptize them and to train them and for them to be responsible and obedient themselves and that the Holy Spirit would be with us everywhere we go, right? But what's the Great Commandment? You've heard it said, Jesus said, of all those things in the Ten Commandments, but he also said to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind, with all of our strength, with everything within us to love our God. I believe that when we love God and we love our neighbors, that would be everybody besides us, and we do that with the goal of the Great Commission, that God's with us, helping us to go and to make disciples. When we do that together, we see 
kingdom impact. And so here's the thing. You can give financially. You can pray. You also can come and join us in what we're doing with your talents and your abilities and your gifting that God has given you. There is something that I've shared with you this morning that each and every one of you can do. I believe it. We're not rocket scientists. We want to be faithful men and women of God, called by God to make a difference. And some of these things that you've seen this morning can happen right here in Sumter or Somerton or wherever you live this morning. You can be on mission right where God has planted you. Why do you live in Sumter? Why do you live where you're planted? Because God's got a purpose and a plan for you to serve and to speak truth and love and be people of forgiveness and of reconciliation that we see throughout the word of God. Pray, give, and go. Next slide. So what some ways do you pray? Pray for impact ministries. Pray for our retreat center. Um, pray for the groups that will stay there. Pray for our Apache Chapel services. There are so many people that come to our services on Sunday that hear the message of the gospel. Pray that they would respond to the Lord's leading in their hearts. Pray for our fundraising efforts. We need more churches. Every summer, we need more students to come and serve on our summer staff. We provide a $2,000 stipend. We provide lodging and food and nine weeks of ministry and service that will help them in their walk with Christ and their discipleship for process and also their faith formation. Um, I was one of them as a college student. I feel like I'm still one because I'm still on mission in a resort setting doing what God has called me to do. Next slide. Um, our, our website's there. Um, our, our, you can reach him by email. Our PO box is there. Um, I'm available to you. I'm your resort missionary in Myrtle Beach. My, my director, my friend Todd, and his wife is, are the other resort missionaries, and that's what we're doing in Myrtle Beach. And we invite you, Southside Baptist Church, to come join us. You'll say, Peter, I don't know about that. I just want to come, look. I want to come see the retreat center first. I want to make sure that bed's just like you said, tempur <laughs> You call me. I'll be glad to show you our retreat center and show you our city and about what God's doing, and maybe in our, one of our ministry sites. Maybe you're there during the summer, and you say, Peter, you came to Southside back in September, and you talked about all this thing, but I want to see it in action next summer. Call me up. I'll say, hey, meet me here, and I want you to see this day camp. Hey, meet me at Broadway. I want you to see the group doing balloon sculpting and face painting. Hey, hey, meet me over at the All Nations Cafe on Monday night and see all these J1 students who are coming in and having a meal and time together in fellowship, students from all across the world coming to Myrtle Beach. Thank you for what you're doing for the advancement of God's kingdom through your missional efforts here at Southside. And I'm going to ask your pastor to come. I want to pray for your pastor. I want, I want to pray for you. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. You want to do, you want to do a Q&A? No, I just Now you said when the youth or kids come and they would stay there a week that they would go out and do programs like for two hours or something. Mm -hmm. Do y'all provide all the program? And the, uh, we provide the ministry sites, mm -hmm. um, but you actually do the programming. I mean, they yeah. they have to figure out. Yes, yeah. The do church, you help them with that? Each, what the, each church does. They bring the games, the snacks, the Bible story, the crafts, the music, and uh, we have a pre-project training in the spring to mm -hmm. help our groups understand exactly what we're asking them okay, to do. That's, that's a great question. Other question is this. How old were you when you got saved? You say you saved I was you? eight or nine years old. Followed up with believer's baptism hey, and I haven't been the same since. All right, the reason I want to ask him that was uh, we're having baptism next Sunday night and uh, some of our those that are going to be baptized or some of our kids, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, they were saved during Bible school. Amen. I told this story before. God can call you at any age. Now, the greatest example I had was a uh, when I was in Rock Hill, uh, a girl that uh, came to work for me. She came from Alabama, and uh, I asked her. 
when I interviewed her about her salvation, and she told me this. And I don't ever forget this. I forget most stuff. I don't forget this. She said, when I was seven years old, I got saved. But then she said, I never doubted my salvation. I knew I was saved. Do you have it? You, 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 you remember, you know. Absolutely. All right. I, that, that's, when you said that, I said, I need to know. Because I remember, you know. And I believe that, too. You know, some people uh, believe you got to be a certain age or whatever. That's baloney there. You can get saved any time God calls you if you just listen to it. Thank you, Pete. You go ahead and pray. He'll close us with this. Awesome. And, Will you pray with me? Yeah. Father, we thank you this morning for this opportunity to be in this place with my brother here. And God, as you shared with me before this service, Father, we pray for him. We pray for his wife. Yes. We pray for your healing, for your anointing. But yet, God, we also pray as you prayed, Lord, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yes. And so, Father, pastors carry a lot, things we don't know and things we don't see. And, Father, I do pray for Pastor Holly today. I pray that you'd um, encourage him today, that, that your spirit would uplift him today, that would you would give him assurance and comfort today in a way that only you can. Lord, words are nice and actions are great sometimes, but sometimes, God, you're the only one who knows what's That's happening right. in his heart. And so, Father, we agree together this morning as the body of Christ. Your will be done in God. his life Amen. today. For his sweet wife, will you lift her up today? Pray for healing. Yes, God. For your ministry of healing today. And Father, you would continue to protect them from the evil one who seeks to kill and to destroy. That you would use them, that you would honor their work and their service here at Southside and their walk by faith with you. Yes, God. Today, tomorrow. And in the days ahead. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank, Thank you, you for being here. And uh, if you want to come by. And yeah, I'll stay and ask any If you have any questions, any questions yeah. that um, you want to ask him, you come down and ask him. Thank you for being here. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Thank y'all. Yeah, I'm going to go now.